When considering PowerShell and digital forensics, one should be asking the question, under what conditions should PowerShell be used in a digital forensic investigation? This will be left to the individual examiner within the organization's policies. It should be about choosing the quickest and most efficient tool and using that tool to maximize optimal results in the investigation. This lesson will explore four scenarios where PowerShell can be used that can be applied to other case studies. Here you see four categories related to digital forensic cases. Examples of data leak cases include identity and credit card theft. Network intrusion involves any penetration into a network for purposes of damage or theft. Malware infection ranges from spyware and keyloggers to viruses and ransomware. Exigent circumstances can involve abduction or human trafficking cases. Scenarios related to these categories include identity theft, data destruction, ransomware, and human trafficking. There are numerous artifacts that can be found on a computer in a forensic investigation. In a previous exercise, you used PowerShell Gallery to install the Power Forensics module. Here you see several Windows artifacts that can be found using the Power Forensics module commandlets. The last two will display user logged onto the system and DNS cache entries. The DNS cache entries gives clues as to website history. In this graphic, you see a way to get websites that a user visited. The first example sets the directory to the registry path. The second one displays the websites. Determining browser history is useful for several cases, such as gathering information on a missing child to see where recent websites have been visited. Website histories can be deleted in a browser, but can remain as registry entries. You can find commands and scripts like these with a simple internet search. This graphic shows a table of artifacts that can be collected using PowerShell in a live forensic investigation. Each artifact will have a corresponding PowerShell commandlet that displays values for each artifact. As a security professional or member of law enforcement, you will be asked to identify incidents. Experienced officers and security analysts will understand what to look for in each particular security or criminal incident. Once you know the artifacts that you are looking for related to an incident, then you would need to match the PowerShell commands, functions, or methods that would find values for what you are looking for as evidence. Here you see a few sample incidents matched to related artifacts and the corresponding commands to reveal those artifact values. For example, you may be examining a system in child pornography when investigating a suspect involved in this crime using that system, you'll want to see applications, services, processes, users logged on, open files, and shares, as well as website history. These artifacts are usually gathered in many other digital forensic investigations. Suppose that you're working on a case involving identity theft. You seize a suspect's laptop what evidence are you looking for? You may be thinking that there are other tools more suited to a case like this. Forensic examiners work in three areas. One is on site doing a triage. The second is performing live analysis. And the third is transporting evidence back to a forensic lab. Triage and live analysis are suited to using PowerShell. PowerShell can be done on site quicker with prearranged targeted items set up to be gathered in scripts in advance. One famous case involved Alberto Gonzalez that was the biggest case of identity theft in the US. Crimes committed included computer fraud, wire fraud, access device fraud, and aggravated identity fraud. Knowing the techniques that are listed here will aid in identifying the evidence you're looking for and the methods used in acquiring evidence. Here, PowerShell is considered a forensic tool. In this graphic, you see other techniques and evidence sources where data can be stolen or found. For digital forensics, there are items for both online and offline activity. An example of an offline technique could be hard drives containing personal information stolen 
are not properly sanitized or destroyed when disposed of. Note that the USB drives are commonly used. It is possible to ascertain that a particular USB device was accessed by viewing the registry linking data on a seized USB device with suspects fingerprints or DNA on the devices including systems and USB drives themselves. In one case involving data destruction, a disgruntled employee who was fired launched a logic bomb that permanently deleted all of his former company's design and production software for measurement and control instruments used by the US Navy and NASA. In addition to the monetary loss and contracts, the attack led to 80 layoffs within the company. This former employee was the chief network program designer. The former computer network administrator was sentenced to 41 months in prison for unleashing the $10 million time bomb. Here you see the charges and evidence linking the suspect to the crime, as well as how the evidence was acquired. In this case, the individual planted the bomb before he left the premise that executed 21 days after he was fired. Because of this, his computer, username, and association with the program was easily identified. On or about May 7, 2021, the U.S. company Colonial Pipeline was the victim of a highly publicized ransomware attack resulting in the company taking portions of its infrastructure out of operation. Colonial Pipeline reported to the FBI that its computer network was, among other things, accessed by an organization named DarkSide and that it had received and paid a ransom demand for approximately 75 bitcoins. Investigators were able to retrieve 63.7 bitcoins valued at 2.3 million in cryptocurrency. Law enforcement was able to track multiple transfers of Bitcoin and identify that approximately 63.7 Bitcoins, representing the proceeds of the victim's ransom payment, had been transferred to a specific address, which the FBI had the private key or the rough equivalent of a password needed to access assets associated from the specific Bitcoin address. This Bitcoin represents proceeds traceable to a computer intrusion and in property involved in money laundering. In a child sex trafficker case, the convicted individual and his minor victim exchanged text messages describing his physical abuse of her. For example, the messages described how he justified hitting and choking her to demonstrate he had control of her. In a subsequent interview, the individual confessed to knowingly exploiting a minor and how he manipulated that minor in doing illegal acts. Other computer evidence in crimes like these includes charges at hotels or other sites, documents detailing businesses, emails, and social media. This would be considered an exigent circumstance where items of evidentiary value need to be insured by not shutting down systems or doing live analysis. During any digital forensic investigations, it is important to be proactive in knowing case parameters before they arrive at your desk. This includes knowing specific scenarios, items of evidentiary value that need to be examined, and being ready with tools to acquire that evidence, whether it is on site with live analysis or triage or being transported back to the lab. We looked at four examples where PowerShell could be used noting that effective examiners use a variety of different tools for different purposes.